Hi, this is Kim speaking. Welcome to Weekly Outlook. So, a cha slight change format just to make things a bit quicker. I've put the sentiment just on a summary sheet, but I'm going to look at uh, what are the key economic da data releases numbers this week. So, let's have a look at the fundamentals. Okay, we've already had some out here. We've already had Broadband speaking earlier on, but we've got uh, Draghi to speak this afternoon. He's addressing the uh, uh, European Parliament Economic and a monetary affairs committee so that's at uh, two o'clock and then at four o'clock he's off to go again uh, so uh, i would imagine there will be other speakers amongst that time so watch out for post two o'clock basically um, could get quite volatile um, subject to what what's to be said so that's today two and four o'clock and the rest has already happened Side of that, and tomorrow then key numbers would normally be GDP, but we it'll be interesting. 9:30 tomorrow morning, we've got GDP and manufacturing production coming out same time, which is to cloudy the the water somewhat. GDP is coming out for the first time on a monthly basis. Now this is the same sort of style as uh, surprisingly uh, Canada. Canada does this, and uh, it may be something to do with uh, our. Uh, head of the Bank of England being Canadian or what I don't know but uh, all of a sudden this data has been released on a monthly basis now it's st still behind the curve by some uh, 40 days uh, 40 days behind the curve but uh, it will be interesting to see the volatility basically it's taken the volatility out of the report to some extent with the Canadian dollar on a monthly basis and I think that's what they're trying to nullify data they don't like volatility in the markets obviously um, so, but we do have manufacturing production key key numbers to be had there tomorrow morning. Side of that is German uh, ZEW economic sentiment can give us a little bit of a wobble sometimes, good or bad, uh, but can uh, move the market somewhat. Uh, that aside, nothing more. Then Wednesday morning we've got Draghi speaking again due to open the um, opening remarks on the ECB statistics conference are my favourite. I wish I was there, not. Uh, anyway, um, whilst I like statistics, I don't like the ECB and I'm not really that fav in favour of Draghi at the moment. So um, we'll see what happens, but that's uh, we, we never know what he could be saying there. He may have said much of it uh, today, but he may say some more of it on Wednesday and it will cause the markets to move again. Uh, it's a long time till then. Um, okay, uh, side of that then US, we've got the uh, inflation data, producer price indexes coming out, the core figures, the import one at 130 there, as highlighted, not a great move in general times, but important all the same. And then at 3 o'clock, just in for those, just about to doze off before and have a little nap before the England game, well, I think it's about the same time, I'm not too sure. Um, but uh, there we have the Bank of England, uh, Bank of Canada, rather, uh, monetary policy report, etc. So we could get some volatility on the Canadian dollar come Wednesday afternoon at three o'clock. I'm sure. Uh, whatever happens, I'm sure we'll get some volatility. Moving through uh, the week and rail crude oil inventories, maybe um, we've got some press conferences going on in the afternoon of Wednesday afternoon there, following the statement. So that uh, again, volatility would be expected around that got Carney speaking he's not to be put out by the fact that his Canadian family are talking he wants to speak to due to speak at the, about the global financial crisis at, oh, okay that's going to be stunning probably not too volatile um, in re reality because uh, it's not relevant to current um, we've got some FOMC speakers maybe at the same event are they do you speak no public accounts okay maybe a bit of volatility as they speak later in the day there um, town hall event local economy okay so these, these could create a bit of volatility with the US dollar later in the evening but uh, uh, not significant uh, mo uh, pr uh, fundamentals there okay uh, moving on to Thursday uh, we've got the ECB monetary policy meeting accounts now I said uh, three months ago that these are a bit of a joke and ever since I said that they've been uh, much more lively so because Draghi lied um, not that I'll ever let him forget it um, or hold a grudge or anything but he did um, so they do tend to have a little bit more weight in, just in case he's lied again um, aside of that inflation then at 1.30 so uh, 12.30, 1.30 on Thursday should get some volatility. Uh, we've got the MPC meet, uh, the, see these speakers, 
Okay, do it cumber it. Um, Cunglyph can move the market somewhat, so we just need to watch out. There is very much uh, bullish talk going on. Um, does it say here, is it a hawk or a bear? Um, doesn't really say he's, uh, he's leaning there. I can't remember which way he goes, but uh, um, if, he, if he's, he's a bit, if he's a bit um, dovish rather, um, he, it may, and he, he, he gets a bit hawkish. Of course, that'll move the, the pound at 12 o'clock on Friday. Side of that, uh, they've got the prelim consumer sentiment, not a big mover on Friday afternoon, so you better go down the pub. That's it. Whew, got rid of those funny mentals. Let's get on to the technicals. And we're looking at the euro dollar at the moment, and it's just pushing into its upper bands here, uh, just beyond uh, last Friday's highs. Uh, where to from here? Well, there is the potential it could push up towards that weekly 21 if it can push on through this area. Uh, a bit of resistance may be where it's sitting at the moment, but not a lot. There was last month, last month's pivot sits around this area. Sometimes those they sort of ghost. Um, there's a little midi around that area, and intraday we've got some uh, pivots sitting around there at the moment. But at the moment, it's sort of really all you can see is the higher lows, higher highs here, and it may still have some more. Um, movement to the upside. What's the sentiment like on it? Well, um, I'll just bring this in and looking at the top one here. The pension insurers, the the, bi the bigger boys, the bigger players, the slower players are still bullish. Um, that remains it. Uh, yet the hedge funds are getting a bit more bearish and I guess the more this goes up, the more bearish they'll become until they're right. Um, so uh, uh, they're switching a little bit more bearish there. So that's the view at the moment. But uh, as I said this morning in the update, we could just see this price push, carry on to push um, up towards the R, R, monthly R1 at some point. Now, intraday, I may be a little bit bearish on it because I'm slightly short, but I'll maybe get stopped out very soon on it. We'll see. But uh, the bigger picture, I'm still bullish on that at the moment. Oh, it's still looking bullish. I say I'm bullish on it. Now the pound, let's get down to the weekly first and that, that too has come to its upper bands here. It's ha also coincided nicely with the uh, daily 50 and we're seeing a bit of uh, slowing up here at the moment. Let's just uh, bring in the uh, sentiment. Look, oops, if we could only just drag this across, it'd be good. So the pound up here, pensions, insurers, they're getting more bearish. The hedge funds are a bit neutral on this at the moment. So, um, well, the, the big money's uh, maybe just hedging their positions, maybe, we'll see, but they're becoming a bit more bearish on the pound. Um, but that too, really high lows, high highs coming through here on a daily basis uh, overall. Um, it's not pitched any lower, so it's um, still luring a little bit bullish, but we're really at sort of this uh, pivotal area. If it breaks this uh, daily 50, as we've seen on the euro, uh, we could be running back into these prior highs here, which coincide with the uh, weekly R1 pivot. Uh, sorry, weekly, monthly R1 pivot. So just uh, watch for that if we do break through at some point. Obviously, we've got the uh, Brexit chat and everything else, and the uh, but it looks like the markets have taken a, a liking to the sort of tone that's coming out of their more business uh, focus, maybe. Um, uh, to keep ties into play, not necessarily what the exit Brexiteers want. So um, it could be a rocky old time, but for now, running into this res resistance could could turn around here. As I say, there's a more bearish from, uh, sentiment coming through from the bigger boys, neutral from the hedge funds. So the dollar yen. So we'll look at the weeklies, and it's, it's hard to find out which direction it's going in a moment. It's erring towards the upside and uh, uh, well the sentiment itself was uh, said it all really. I just had a look there and the pensions, the insurers, the bigger boys, neutral to bearish and the hedge funds neutral. So overall um, at some point it, perhaps it will uh, head, head on towards that trend line that's sitting there which uh, in, in turn could find some resistance. Short term, we're just consolidating within a phase here. It's so slow, but uh, well, it may yet uh, get to bounce. Now, if if 
I may get get the opposite way around on this. If it breaks those lows which I've just drawn through, uh, well, it may find support on its monthly pivot, which it hasn't tested yet. That might be fine. But if it gets through this cluster of moving averages here, which is the 34, the 500, the 200, it's, it's still above its 21, and its 50 is uh, right at the bottom there. If those moving averages don't hold it up, um, well, could could run back down to those prior lows there, maybe the S1. But, I mean, this week and the way it's moving at the moment, I expect more of the same, really. Maybe it will get a pitch up at some point. But uh, you can just see the very fact that all these key moving averages, the 500 moving averages, is, is right running flat. It just shows how um, lacking of uh, solid trend it is at the moment. So that's the dollar yen, or Aussie dollar. The Aussie dollar now, now is a question on this weekly. It uh, previous week it closed up, or last week it closed up within the uh, bands there. It's pushed up now towards its uh, daily eight, looking like it might still have some uh, legs in it, possibly. Sentiment wise, well, uh, he says um, the the <laughs> the pensions, the big guys, they're marginally less short, um, and the hedge funds are marginally more short so they're not really trusting this move too much so it's a case of when it uh, when it finishes maybe uh, in their book and you, you know quite rightly when you look at the bigger picture here lower highs all the way through here uh, lower lows so far um, the bigger picture the bigger money well it probably wants to be uh, seeing this roll over again and certainly there's the uh, the possibility to do so but for now whilst it's uh, uh, pushing up, we'll see how it. I've got sort of uh, started putting some alerts for myself when it gets back towards this daily 50. Last time it completely mullied it and uh, eventually then broke down. So, uh, plenty of time with these sort of trades. It would probably be a sw swing type trade if it happens, um, but for now it's still looking on that more bullish side. So, that's where we are there. And that did come from some divergence, I may add, at the bottom there. So there was sort of a bit of double divergence going on. We talked about this in the room today in terms of how far it comes back when it's double diverged. Will it come back more? Well, there was a case for, there's a case for that, potentially. But we'll, we'll wait until Niche has finished his testing. OK, Canadian dollar. Let's look at this weekly picture. And uh, whilst that's cooking, actually, I'm just going to bring this in. Um, the pensions insurers are switching, they're getting short, they're starting to get short, the hedge funds are more short. Now, um, there's not an overall net net short at the moment as such, but when it gets proper proper short, um, that could uh, maybe just confirm uh, well, what would be further upside here, because it's the dollar yen, uh, dollar CAD rather, uh, <laughs> yen, CAD, whatever. Anyway, where's it sitting? Well, it's sitting uh, bang into its um, its weekly eight at the moment. There, it's just got the band just a bit lower. It may just roll through this. It looked like it might have uh, gone from the monthly pivot last week. It was sort of hanging in around that area. Friday killed that a little bit more strength. Where to from here? We'll just wait. I mean, it's uh, if it starts moving up properly, there's. Uh, I mean, patience could wait, and because there's that eight moving average, and you just could be looking to bar the break of the eight, uh, heading back towards the uh, prior highs. There, it has got higher lows here, higher highs kicking in there, overall. But this is a bit sort of more pivotal. It's uh, had a bit more of a retrace uh, of late. So that's where we are with that. Not a lot going on. Um, but of course, don't forget this week we've got the uh, Bank of Canada data coming out. So I uh, also looked at New Zealand dollar because I get this by request. Only from one person. But no, seriously, I've been looking at this myself. Uh, can, uh, the New Zealand dollar, its um, I mentioned it had been used as a carry trade, but the interest rates are around about the same. So it's, uh, it, it's lost its use as a ca carry trade uh, pairing at the moment. Um, unless they start in hiking the rates again, but um, and they said that there weren't much chance of that, so it's got potential weakness. Now I'm just sort of looking where that weakness might come. Well, we'll see. Um, 
it may, may come from a little bit further up I've put, set some alerts here for myself and see what it does when it comes back to this uh, monthly pivot here and see if it reacts from that if it pushes on through this today uh, well I'll be watching that uh, daily 34 daily 50 sort of area but um, What's the sentiment? Well, the sentiment is not lots of volume here uh, on the New Zealand dollar, I should just say. So you just got to watch this sentiment a little bit. Net short um, uh, overall, hedge funds more short. So uh, that, that's where we are. It's a sort of a, it does look, it does doesn't look wonderful. But uh, as I say, it, it may be some of these bigger boys are a bit slow to move, and it's uh, doing something a bit more of a correction here. But if we'll we'll see. Uh, but uh, certainly at the moment, really looks like we should be um, letting it letting it show us the path. So uh, there we go. That's with that. Then I just thought I would have then a look at the S and P's, and we'll come down to the weeklies on here. So we've been pushing up. Um, last week I managed a bit of a solid push up there on the futures there. And I'm looking at the S&P 500 because I'm going to be looking at the um, uh, contracts of them in a moment. Um, but uh, it, it's pitching up again at the moment. It's, it's, it's a sorry old sense for, for many days. I mean, we spent well over a week of chop running through there and that's broken through. And it's sort of uh, on Friday, it sort of managed to break back up there and it looks solid at the moment. Look at this picture, higher lows still pushing through. We didn't break the lows there. So higher lows all sort of looking solid from that point of view. But the interesting thing that I sort of noticed here, and it, I mean, it may push on further, but uh, is is what the big boys are doing here. The, the, the pensions, the insurers that love to have um, stocks in their in their holdings there they've reduced their longs and they've increased their short so they've reduced they're still significantly long um but uh they're reducing that by quite a quite a bit and they um they reduced their shorts uh, uh sorry increased their shorts rather so they're getting probably a little bit uh, wary now the hedge funds have been bearish on the, and, the, and must have lost a fortune on the S&P's futures for a long time. They got slightly more longs, although overall bearish. Um, that, that was this week or last week. They increased their longs a little bit more, but as I say, they're overall bearish. There, just to clear, clarify what I mean by that. But uh, they they do tend to uh, get it wrong. But we, what we're seeing here uh, on the S&P's anyway. Um, what we're seeing here is um, potential uh, moving and slowing down of the tanker but uh, that said probably going to make a new high this week <laughs> uh, so come back to our weeklies and we're sort of pushing up but there's plenty of resistance points just above there around that 2788 area prior body highs okay um, so that's that and finally I'm going to uh, finish up on oil And I'll just talk about it. The um, managed money, they increasing their longs here. So they're, they're seeing the potential for further upside. Now the weekly, it's put that doji in there. Is it going to roll over here? It To me, it looked like last week that up until Friday, well, perhaps the start of the, uh, the rollover may be beginning. We know Trump doesn't like the high oil prices and is trying to convince people to pump more oil. But at the moment, they're holding up. Now, if we do start seeing that uh, roll over a little bit, we've got the uh, monthly pivot below us as a potential target, but uh, just need to see a bit more confirmation in the short term if this is going to start rolling over. Uh, but uh, there is the potential for it to pull off. Just because uh, Trump wants it low doesn't mean to say it will necessarily be low. He did pretty well last time for us um, when he started uh, getting a bit sort of wanting to be uh, uh, dropped, but um, we'll see. Anyway, that's pretty much it for me. I hope you have a great week and uh, come on England in the football. Uh, not biased or anything. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.